Hello! In this video we will see how we can create a simple 2D platform shooter. To make this tutorial I use this asset from each.io made by Secret Hideout. You can check the link at the description. And now let's start our project. First let's create the main scene. The main scene will basically hold the other scenes. So now we can create the player scene. Our player scene will have animated sprites. So let's add it. Here are multiple sprites. I will choose the blue one. And I will use the run animation. So let's select our chosen tile sprite. Let's make it a bit faster. So I guess the speed is okay. Now we can add a collision shape. And of course we need to define a body. For our player we can use a kinematic body. Now let's add the player to the scene to see the size. So the size is really small. Let's scale it. I guess 3 or 4 will be enough. Let's check it. Okay, I think it's alright. Now let's add a new scene to become the ground. The ground, as always, is just a static body with a collision shape and a sprite. Nothing special here. For the sprite we can use this sprite from the pack we downloaded and we can just scale it a bit or rather scale it a lot. And then we just make the shape match the sprite. And as we haven't defined anything to the player, that's what we have for now, just a player walking above the ground. Let's fix that. So we go back to our player. Here I will make a small change, turning the kinematic body the root of the scene. In our case it will keep the code a bit simpler, and then we can remove the old node 2 now let's create the script to our player. Now I will create a generic script to move the player. Here inside the physics process we will have two functions, one to handle the movement that we will create and the other it's the movement slide used by the kinematic body to move. And in the movement slide function, we need to pass two vectors 2D, one with the direction of the movement and other pointing to the upside. Now let's create the move function to handle the inputs. Now 
Let's just change the direction here because it will be a vector 2D and we can set it to a zero vector. Just to keep it clear, this is the same as this. But I like to define it with zero. In the same way, vector up is the same as this because it's pointing to the top of the screen, that's the negative y. Now let's go back to our move function. First, let's just make our player move to the right and to the left and apply the gravity to it. Now let's go to the input map to set the buttons. And let's check what we have for now. Our player is really small again. That's because we have removed the node that was scaled. And so we need to scale the kinematic body now. So let's check it again. Okay, the size is a lot better. We can move to the right and to the left. But the player is slow. So let's increase the gravity, the move speed to the right, the move speed to the left. We need to make some change to the code, because actually the player doesn't stop to walk. Here we can put the move and slide result to the direction vector, so the gravity will not keep increasing when the player is at the ground. So let's make our player be able to jump. Okay, now we can jump, but the jump is really slow, and we can jump multiple times without being at the ground, so let's change that. Let's check it again. Okay, now we just can jump if we are touching the ground, and the speed is okay. Let's this be our player for now, and let's create our bullet. Okay, so we create a new scene. This scene can be a sprite. I will just use the Godot icon as texture. Let's scale it down. And now let's add a script to the bullet. For now the script is really simple because we just need the bullet to move to the right. There we can see the bullet moving. It's really slow. Let's go back to our script to change that. And then we can add the bullet to the player so that the player can really shoot. So here at the player scene, we will preload the bullet scene so that we can create it inside our code. Now let's create our shoot function.
we need a new variable to hold the instance of the bullet. So now here, if the player presses the shoot action button, that's the space in my case here, a new instance of the bullet is saved at the B variable. And then we can add the B variable as a child of the player. Ok, now we can see it's working, but we can see some problems too. First, the bullet is really big, that's easy to change. Other problem is that the bullet follows the player. So you can see that when we shoot and the player is falling, the bullet goes down too. It happens because at the moment the bullet is child of the player, and so its position is linked to the player's position. So let's go back to our code to change that. First we can go to our bullet script and scale the bullet down. Now we can go back to the player script and what we will do now is change the parent of the bullet from the player to the main scene. To do that we just need to get the parent of the player, that is the main scene too. But now we need to set the bullet spawn position. We could just get the player position, but we can do it better creating a position 2D and so we will know exactly where the bullet will spawn. And now we just need to set the bullet's global position to the position 2D global's position. And so we can see that now everything is working as expected. And just to clarify, the bullet is now smaller because it's not affected by the player scale anymore, because now it's a child of the main scene, and so is affected by the main scale. Okay. Now the visual part of our bullet is working, but like a real bullet, we need to make it be able to destroy things. So we can use our area 2D and a collision shape inside of it. Another point that we need to take care of is that at the moment we are just creating bullets and never destroying them. Because of that, the bullets still exist even if they are outside the screen. But we can easily fix that using a visibility notifier. So now we can link this signal to our script and make the bullet destroy itself if it leaves the screen. So now we can delete this test bullet and let's rename the bullet. Now let's create a new scene to be the enemy. The enemy will be just there to be destroyed by the bullet so that we can see that the bullet really works. So for now our enemy will be really simple. First we create a sprite. Let's choose one of the sprites from our assets. Now let's select just one frame. And now let's flip him. Now let's add an area 2D in a collision shape so that the player can collide with the bullet. Now we can add a script to handle the collision. And now we link this signal to the script. If an area enters, this signal will be sent. And so we can kill the enemy calling Q3 now. Now let's add the enemy to the scene to check if everything is working. 
Enemy is really small, let's scale it up to make it the player's size. So now let's test what you have. Ok, so now the bullet can kill the enemy. But the bullet keeps going after it hits the enemy. To destroy the bullet, we will get this area so that we receive the area that has entered the enemy's area. And here we need to pay attention to a little detail. As we are getting the area here, if we destroy the area, we are not destroying the entire bullet. Exactly as you can see here at the bullet. So to destroy an entire bullet, we need to add the parent of the area. And so we will get the expected behavior. And so we have the basics of a 2D shooter platformer. We have seen how to create a player, how to create a platform, how to create bullets and make them kill an enemy. As this video is already long, I will finish it here. If you want to see a second part of this video, please click the like button, comment, subscribe. If you have any suggestions about this video or about other content, leave a comment too. And thank you for watching. Bye.